So just a reminder of what I did last time. I added, finished adding the arteries slash fingers. Um, I added some chambers to the heart here and here. You guys actually saw the last thing I did because you're in my Tuesday, Friday class. Um, and then I added these little funky little guys here. Um, so now, and I did wrap it up pretty good because it was a three day weekend. Um, it feels like it's getting pre-leather hard, which is actually good, a good stage to do more carving. So that's what I'm gonna show you today, some detail work. Now, if you're not there yet, that is okay. You can continue to add wet things to this as well, but it's always a good idea to kind of finish adding the wet stuff before you start the carving and then get it to a leather hard state. You might ask, be asking yourself, well, what is a leather hard state? Really what that means is that everything is pretty much in its place. Like if I try to wiggle this, it's not going to go anywhere. And if I push on it too hard, it's going to break right off. But it's still really malleable. Like if I put my finger in it, it moves the clay still. And if I put a texture in it or carve into it, it's still really kind of moist and, and easy to work with. So that is the perfect stage to actually carve into your piece and add little details. So I'm gonna grab a chunk of clay here. I think I'm gonna show you the carving part first. So carving tools that are good to use. I love this one. I know, I realize you guys don't have a lot of these because you know you collected your own tools or maybe you do, maybe you bought some. But this really is my favorite carving tool. It always has been. I like the sides of it. And I also like that the loops are just this really thin metal. Um, and I can kind of get into really tight spaces with it. And it has a geometric side and a circular side. So it's really versatile. I gave you guys a bigger loop tool. Um, these are nice. Um, they are, you know, they do have more substantial edge to them. So you can't get as much detail work with these two, but you can still kind of get in and dig out some of the big stuff. Um, you might have already also found things at home that kind of might act as good um, smoothing tools too. Like this one is a ceramic tool, but it's just basically a little wooden spoon and I can get in there and smooth things out with it. And it has two different sides. Um, some of these wooden tools also have like little forks on them. Um, you could go in there with your, you know, your pumpkin carving tool or, you know, I have this big scooper one has an interesting texture. So the objective right now really is to carve away some detail and create some, some surfaces that are um, replications of what you're trying to get with your theme and your heart. Um, and then also thin it out a little bit and add texture. So we're carving away and we're also adding texture. So I'm going to start by just carving. I think I'll start with maybe getting the detail on this finger here. So I'm actually looking at my own finger and I'm mimicking this off of my left hand, right? Because it's the ring finger hand. So I'm going to look at the knuckle and I'm going to kind of bend it the way that this is being uh, bent. And I'm going to actually just draw out, take my needle tool first and draw out where the knuckle is. And you know, you might say to yourself, well, uh, that looks good enough. I'm just going to draw these lines in there and call it a day. But it's not, it's not good enough, right? Because the shape of that finger is still kind of wonky and clunky and it just looks like I just stuck that on. So what I really want to do first is go through and actually do some carving that articulates the form of the, the finger a little bit more. So, and you see how quickly, whoops. It's amazing how much you have to actually move around to keep those lights on. Okay. So you see how that's kind of flaking off? That's what you want. If your clay is not flaking off like that and it's still sticking, then it's probably uh, too wet still. So I'm gonna go through and I'm gonna actually look at like, what does the knuckle look like when it's bent? And I might even add more clay. I think I need more of a knuckle there. There's more of a straight edge right here too. 
And this is where we really start to get the refining of, of a clay piece, is in the carving of it. And you made these pretty thick, so you can probably do a pretty good uh, amount of carving without going through. And if you do happen to go through, that's okay. It's still wet enough to repair. Now as we get to the top here, you might want to think about what do you want the edge of your artery to look like? Well, when I look at these, I see that there's a little bit of like a, a, like a coil or cap on the edge. So I have enough clay here that I can probably just carve away at it enough and leave that little edge cap there. And these are all the details that are going to make your piece really nice. And I just love the way that clay like just flakes right off. You know, those videos that everybody was into last year or the year before where you know, it's so satisfying that ceramics, everything, absolutely everything you do in ceramics feels that way. <laughs> Unless your piece breaks and it doesn't feel that way, but all of these things are very tactile experiences that in a lot of ways we, we kind of lose this a little bit when we're on our computers as much as we have to be. We lose um, how, how fun and good it feels to actually like make something with your hands. Um, so that's why we love clay so much because it's an opportunity to really make something from scratch. And it gets even more fun when you go off to college and you're actually making the clay from scratch. Right? You're going into the studio and you're taking dry bags of glass and dry bags of oxides and dry bags of different types of clay from all over the world and you're following a recipe and you're making that clay in a big mixer. That is so satisfying. And the same with your glazes. So this is, can get a little dicey in here. I'm carving and pushing on the edge of this and if I push too hard I could break this whole thing off. So to counter that pressure uh, first thing I'm going to do is maybe use um, a loop tool that's a little bit stiffer. These loops are bendy and so I have to push harder on them to actually get the carve that I want. So I'm going to put my finger on the inside of this and I'm going to go in with a, a harder loop tool so I don't have to um, push as hard if that makes sense. It's just the harder edge kind of scrapes it away a little easier. And this is tedious. This part, you know, takes some time. This is actually one of my favorite parts of making a piece because it really can start to look just like you want it to look. And a lot of you know beginning ceramic students will forget about this step or they won't know to even do this step. Um, okay, so if you get a bunch of little shavings kind of sticking to your piece, I recommend just taking a, a dry brush and just kind of sweeping them out of there pretty frequently because if you let them build up they're going to get stuck to your piece. In fact that little guy is stuck. So I'm going to just continue. I'm going to support this as I'm working on it so that I don't um, collapse it or break a piece off. If you do, if it happens to you, that's okay though because like I said they're still wet enough that you can reattach. Okay, so now I'm going to actually look at the inside of this. And this, I have to be really delicate with this because it's getting drier. The, the drier your piece gets, the more fragile it gets. It could very easily snap off at this point. And um, it's not a good idea to do any carving like this on a piece that's completely bone dry. Because I guarantee you, if you try to do this to this finger while it's bone dry it's going to snap on you or it's going to it's going to be so brittle that it's going to break and sometimes i go back and forth like i'll carve on it a little bit and then i might go in with a sponge and um, or a paintbrush and dip it in water and then just kind of clean it up 
a bit, you know, make it um, smoother, get rid of those carve marks. And I'm going to show you how to add clay to this because I want to add a knuckle to that. I'm looking at the profile of my knuckle and see how much it pops out. I don't have that with this yet. So if you wanted to add a little bit of wet clay to your leather hard clay, do the same thing. You just kind of go in and you score it up. Also remembering that you don't want your clay to be ever, you know, be thicker than like a half an inch. So I'm just gonna take a little bit of clay there. Make a ball, score it up. Get my water. Just a tiny bit, right? We don't want to saturate our piece. So I'm gonna add that knuckle. So I'm gonna really look at my knuckle. It kind of comes to a point and it sort of tapers. It's kind of fun to use your own hands as a model because then the piece becomes very personal to you. So you can start to see that that is starting to look more like a finger and less just like a tube that I added. So I'm going to flip it over and I'm going to look at this side. So there's some really interesting like, you know, my hands are older than you guys' hands, but I have some wrinkles and I have like these little, you know, sacks of muscles or whatever that is, skin folded over, <laughs> um, increases in my hand. And I can carve those into my piece. And we have pretty thick clay here, so take advantage of that and get in there and do some carving. Don't be afraid to pull some clay off of there. You know, look, the part of learning how to work with anything that creates a 3D object is to really think in 3D. You want to you want to get away from thinking in 2D. So, a line, a carved line that's as deep as your needle tool, that's 2D. That line is 2D. We want to carve that line in. We want to create a crease and a dip. This is a 3D object. So that takes time and practice and you have to be able to see it. You know, you have to you have to look at the difference between this line is just a needle tool mark. This line is a carved crease that really mimics what that hand looks like when you kind of close it up like that. And that's, that's the kind of detail I'm looking for. When you guys submit your pieces, I'm gonna be asking for some detail photos of them so that I can really see them and grade them. And then you will be turning them into me. At some point this semester, I'm gonna be asking you to bring your pieces to school um, and you're gonna be putting, on, putting them on a bisque cart outside my classroom and I'm gonna be firing them for you. So you'll be able to, I'll be able to see them up close, but in order to give them a grade for now, I do wanna see your detail work. It's meticulous. Ceramics is a slow art. It is not, it does not go quick. Okay, now I'm gonna go back to my knuckle and do a little carving. And again, these are not lines from my needle tool, these are, these are actual, like, look at my hand. Look at that knuckle. Look at how it kind of creases in and it has these little bumpy lines. You want to get those. You could draw them in first so you know what you're doing. And then you can go in and carve them. Now, I just added that wet clay. So I might go back in later after this has dried a bit and do a little carving because that's super wet. And then I have lines up here too. So I'm gonna capture those. And then, you know, we decided earlier on this finger that I was gonna put a nail, some nails in there, and because I think that looks kind of cool. So I don't wanna forget about this. 
on this hand. And it's just the start of the nail. Really going to be careful as I'm working on this. I don't want it to break off. Okay, and then I'm going to go back in with my texturizer because I had to kind of carve off some of that texture. I'm going to add it back in where I can. I might need to go in with another tool and create similar texture. Not all the way up the finger, just, you know, high enough that it looks like it's there's a transition, right, from the heart texture to the finger texture. And then I might go in with a paintbrush, and if I do this a bit, it's gonna smooth out my carve marks. And kind of clean up my work. Now, if I were working on this for myself, which I am, you know, but if I were in my studio and I was I had more time, I would probably spend <laughs> like an hour on that one finger just because it's fun and I can make it look exactly how I want it to look. You could use a sponge for this, but I prefer a paintbrush because I can get in there and really kind of get the crevices. Okay, so I'm going to try to show you that up close. So I've got some articulated finger shape. It gets a little thicker here because I wanted this to look like the artery. And then I've got creases carved in to look more finger-like. Um, and then I'm going to go in and do that to everything, right? I'm going to clean these up. These definitely need to be, you don't want it to look like you just stuck it on there. You can see your finger mark where you smoothed it out. You want to create realistic textures. And really like look at the heart, you know, that's a bumpy texture. I need to find a way to create a bumpy texture in there. You guys have any questions? So I probably will go in and clean up these art, these the veins as well, and I could even carve more veins. So I'm going to go in and I'm going to run my tool along the edge here. I'm going to do the same thing over here. And this is where the paintbrush comes in handy, as I can I can get in there with the paintbrush and really clean up that vein. Because it goes, it goes right into the crevice where I can't get my finger or the tool, and it smooths smooths it out a little bit. If that's what the um, textured effect you're going for is, you could even kind of, you know, create a texture with the paintbrush. And if I wanted to carve another vein in there, kind of coming out the side of this vein, I'm just going to dig my tool in. I'm going to dig my tool in and create sort of a bevel. And then kind of round it out. I'll take some detail shots of this and post them so you guys can see. You know, and then take your other tools and experiment. Like, I want that edge to be flatter. So I'm going to go in with this flat edge here. And I'm going to kind of put it up against the, the side of where I carved, and I'm going to smooth that out. I'm going to get rid of that extra ridge. And then again, take my paintbrush, clean it up. And then once I carve and clean up that vein, I might want to go back in again and add the texture between the veins that I lost when I smoothed out and carved. And using other tools to create the texture is good. Really, texture is a relief 
it's a relief which means it's coming out from the surface so really get in there and you know stab your piece and cut into it and you know tap it and go back and forth like cut into it dig into it and then smooth it out a little bit and then go back in with another tool and cut in and dig in in another way and go back and smooth it out like go if you go back and forth between smoothing and texturizing you will be really amazed at the really neat surfaces you're going to get very three-dimensional surfaces so that's the kind of detail i want to see on your piece all the way around even the bottom you guys even the bottom because you might say well it sits on the bottom no one's going to see that every professional play artist deals with the bottom of their piece just like they're dealing with the sides of their piece. You don't want chunks of clay like, like Miss Greninger has on here. You want to actually complete your heart texture. So I would go through and, you know, texturize, go back and forth, smooth texture, smooth texture. I really create a real three-dimensional object. Okay, so I have a lot more work to do on this. Um, I also have to add the ring, right? The whole thematic element to this um, is that ring. And then also the blood vein that comes up through, I have to find a way to do that. Like, do I want it to come out of here? Or do I want it to run up the side? You know, maybe I think about that. I think I'm gonna save that for the next demo and then the next class. I'll get to see that and then you guys can rewatch their demo if you need to. All right, any questions before I move on to ceramics too? No? All right, I'm gonna go ahead and stop this video.